gets is basically you know you actually the farmers dig up canal right across or all over or uh, you know um, at the border bordering the farm bordering the uh, farm land and that is when the canals are fed with water right it could be water from the river it could be and those water are being you know taken up by the crops so intermediate ways you know it's uh, the farm has been divided in such a way so that there are canals uh, equally dividing the entire farmland so that all so the entire area of crops receive equal amount of water right now comes the river lift systems what are the river lift systems the river lift system is basically you know where uh, this is only possible in cases where the river is very close by to the farmland here water is directly drawn from the rivers for supplementing irrigation in areas close to rivers so what happens is that you know the water that has been directly drawn from the river this could most of the times this is be done mechanically by using a water pump right a water pump is used in these cases a mechanical water pump you know which is run on electricity of quite a few horsepower maybe 3 or 5 horsepower and then it's been run in such a fashion that you know it kind of draws the water and uh, pushes it to the to a uh, you know irrigation channels that has already been designed to going towards the uh, agricultural farmland and with this what happen is that it is this is more or less a community work you know there could be 10 or 15 farmers together who could you know pull in money and invest in a water pump and then irrigate their lands you know all 10 15 put together could have you know 50 60 lands right as in farmlands and they could use this as a alternative measure but this is possible only in areas where there is a river close by or if at all even if there is a river close by if the river has got adequate water right because most of the times it's been seen that rivers down south or rivers up there a few in the north also a few in the west are all drying up right so it's only possible if the rivers have enough water sufficient water okay now the last process of irrigation that we would be discussing is basically building of tanks what happens here is there you know small storage reservoirs are made these small you know there are the small catchment areas where uh, you know um, there are the small reservoirs basically you know huge pits that are being made and water is being stored into these reservoirs right they could have stored water this could be rain water this could be river brought from uh, outside this could be river from uh, water from rivers whatever be the mode but water is being stored so that you know as and when they require they could just uh, you know irrigate the farmland accordingly this is a smarter way to do this practice is observed in places where there is a shortage or paucity of water right okay now advantages of irrigation crop plants are irrigated with fresh water to supply two essential elements to them hydrogen and oxygen irrigation of crop fields is necessary to provide sufficient moisture for the germination of seeds as seeds do not germinate in dry soil irrigation of crop plants is essential for the growth and elongation of roots of the crop plants irrigation is necessary to increase the number of aerial branches called tillers in crop plants so as to get a good crop yield irrigation is essential for absorption of nutrient elements by the crop plants from the soil correct thank you anna so basically you know crop plants are irrigated with fresh water to supply two essential elements to them that is hydrogen and oxygen as we all know that water is nothing but h2o right this is water now for example if we could supply you know whenever we add whenever we water the plants or the crops directly indirectly what we are doing is that we are adding two very important uh, elements and that is one is hydrogen and the other is oxygen these are very much required by the plants on a day to day basis because you know the way they would conduct water you know osmosis happening uh, diffusion and how uh, photosynthesis will happen 
you know whether they'll be able to absorb the nutrients that we are giving or not so there are several things which would be dependent on especially the oxygen part right and uh, so that's the reason why water it's not only moistens the soil but it also acts as a channel through which you know it can uh, kind of absorb all the nutrients that are being added to the soil right so the first and foremost is that we are adding two essential elements hydrogen and oxygen the second is irrigation of crop fields is necessary to provide sufficient moisture for the germination of seeds as seeds do not germinate in dry soil you know this is the first thing that we were, we had discussed if you remember the soil has to be moist enough you know because when the farmer sows the seeds right the germination of seeds cannot happen in a dry soil i'm sure all of you must have done germination when you were in class 4 and 5 in your science activity classes you must have you know taken some moong dal taken sprouts you know and then you must have planted those, those sprouts in a pot of soil at home right and you must have watered the soil right so there why did you have to water first and foremost you have to keep the soil moist because a moist soil would only encourage the seed coat and you know it would uh, actually keep the cotyledons even more moist and help them release all the uh, nutrition nutrients so that the plants can grow up to a desired uh, height or length right so the, the soil has to be moist enough right now next comes irrigation of crop plants is essential for the growth and elongation of roots right for example if the roots are stunted what will happen sahas can you tell me sahas can you use the microphone yes correct so basically both the points are correct basically the roots have to be long enough first and foremost to fetch water to be able to fetch water for the plant right because uh, see if the you know if this is the plant right if this is the plant and the roots are just this much they are very short you know it would have already finished the water that's existing at this level slowly and st steadily over a period of weeks and months you know the roots have to grow longer only then it will be able to fetch water from the low ground level there is water stored here also you know it's only in the case of you know uh, huge trees that we can think of the roots reaching the aquifer but that is also very rare but mainly when we water the plant water is being spread all the at, you know equally at all the places so the roots have to you know spread out really elongate themselves and they have to spread out and they have to reach out to distant places to fetch water for the plant that is one and the second point is that you know they have to fetch nutrients also you know because if they are there here locally then you know in a matter of a few weeks all the nutrients will be over they have to grow beyond this area to fetch nutrients from these levels also because there are nutrients here too right and the third point is that farer or longer the new roots will go it will give even more anchorage to the plant anchorage right it will be able to hold the plant even more firmly on the soil so that just a gust of wind and you know a little bit of heavy rainfall and otherwise the plant will just you know wither away or just wilt or just you know tilt on one side but if the roots are really deeper and stronger and broader and longer then it will provide very good anchorage then the plant will not tilt towards one side even however be strong be the wind or rain okay so roots actually play a very vital role see every part of a plant is actually you know is important you really can't do away with with any of it, without any of it right okay irrigation is necessary to increase the number of aerial branches right in crop plants so as to get a good crop yield now what also happens is that the more you water the plant even in your home you would see the more you water your plant the plant not only grows longitudinally but it also grows like this horizontally not only vertical but also horizontal it gives rise to more branches 
and more branches means more leaves more leaves means good photosynthesis and that also means that would also give rise to fruits and flowers more branches would also mean it would give rise to fruits and flowers right so these aerial branches are known as tillers right tillers really help in overall uh, you know it takes care of it's overall good for the plant for the crop because it increases the surface area so photosynthesis level also goes up right so it will overall give a the crop will give a good yield right okay irrigation is essential for the absorption of nutrient elements by the crop plants from the soil this is what sahas was uh, uh, this is what srishti was saying that you know it helps in the absorption of nutrients it really helps absorb the nutrients from each and every nook and corner of the soil and it helps in the overall growth of the plants 